this is not yet another cloud comparison video. I'm not just going to be giving you a basic overview of each provider. Instead, we're going to be comparing Amazon Web Services, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, GCP, on a number of key factors and really dive in into the details. So grab your coffee or your favorite beverage, sit back and let's get started. My name is Elias, I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. First up on the list, we have Amazon Web Services, also known as AWS. This is the oldest and the most established cloud provider, having been launched back in 2006. AWS offers a wide range of services, including compute and storage, and databases, as well as machine learning and Internet of Things capabilities. It's also the most popular cloud provider today, with the largest market share. Next, we have Microsoft Azure. Azure was launched in 2010 and offers similar services to AWS, including compute and storage and databases. It also has a strong focus on hybrid cloud capabilities, allowing customers to easily connect on-premise infrastructure with Azure services. Azure also has a strong integration with other Microsoft products, such as Office 365 and Dynamics 365. Lastly, we have Google Cloud Platform, or GCP. Now, GCP was launched in 2011, just one year after Azure, and offers similar services to AWS and Azure, including, again, compute, storage, and databases. And GCP has a strong focus on big data and machine learning. With services like BigQuery and TensorFlow, it also offers strong integration with other Google products, such as Google Analytics and Google Maps, for example. So let's start our comparison with pricing. AWS is known for having a vast array of products and services to choose from, but their pricing structure can be a little complex and difficult to navigate. Azure, on the other hand, has a more straightforward pricing model and often offers discounts for long-term commitments, which can make it a good choice for businesses with predictable workloads. And GCP has a reputation for being the most cost-effective of the three, especially for those who are willing to do some optimizations to get the best prices. Next, let's take a look at the range of services offered. AWS has the most comprehensive offering of the three, with a huge number of products and services that can be tailored to fit almost any need. Azure comes in second in this regard, with a solid selection of services that are particularly well-suited for enterprise customers. And GCP is a bit more focused with a smaller range of services that are geared more towards developers and startups. Keep that in mind, we'll get back to it later in the video. Now I have heard folks complain about how the AWS web console is overwhelming. So that got me thinking about comparing the web consoles next. And it seems all three major cloud providers offer user-friendly interfaces and comprehensive documentation to help users get started. However, in terms of web console ergonomics, there are some differences between the three providers. First, AWS offers a comprehensive web console with a wide range of services, but I agree, it can be overwhelming for beginners. The console is highly customizable and it allows users to create custom dashboards, but it can also take some time to navigate and find the specific services you need. On the other hand, Azure's web console is considered to be more intuitive and easy to use compared to AWS with a more streamlined interface and clear navigation. The console also offers a wide range of services, but it's more focused on Microsoft's specific products and services. Now, GCP's web console is considered to be the most user-friendly of the three, with a clean, simple interface that makes it easy for beginners to find and use the services they need. The console offers also a wide range of services, but it's more focused on big data and machine learning. So it seems that overall, all three cloud providers offer user-friendly web consoles, but Azure and GCP are considered to be more intuitive and more beginner friendly or, or user friendly than AWS. Let's talk about Internet of Things next. As a subject I'm very interested in personally uh, as a tinkerer. So I went on the hunt trying to find which out of the major three cloud providers is well positioned in the IoT domain. 
and we'll start with AWS. Well, it offers a comprehensive set of IoT services, including AWS IoT Core, Greengrass, and IoT Analytics. These services provide a wide range of capabilities for IoT deployment, such as device management, data collection and processing, machine learning. However, the complexity of these services can be overwhelming for a beginner. Azure IoT, on the other hand, is considered to be more beginner friendly compared to AWS, uh, with a more streamlined interface and a focus on ease of use. Azure IoT Central is a fully managed SaaS solution that allows users to connect, to monitor, and to manage IoT devices without requiring any cloud expertise. GCP also offers a wide range of IoT services, including IoT Core, Cloud IoT Edge, and Cloud IoT Devices DK. But it seems GCP's IoT services are focused on data analytics, on machine learning, and on edge computing. Google's IoT services is considered to be easy to use and beginners friendly, but not as comprehensive, not as complete as AWS or Azure. By the way, did you start to notice a pattern here? It seems that no matter what field we look at, Azure is considered to be most beginner friendly, AWS the most comprehensive set of services, while GCP is considered to be easy to use, but with a focus on data analytics and machine learning. But I was not convinced, not yet. So I set out to research yet another aspect, their SDKs, the software development kits, and how easy it is for their customers to build and integrate applications with their respective cloud services. But that was almost a waste of time because they pretty much turn out to score the same. All the three provide SDKs that support various programming languages such as Java, Python, .NET, Node.js, Go, Ruby, and many, many more. All the three provide a convenient way to interact with their services, and all the three provide a CLI, a command line interface that allows developers to access their respective services using the command line commands. So I quickly moved on to the next item on my list, which is databases. I wanted to learn which one was offering the best database services, allowing the customers to store, to manage, access their data in the cloud. So here it goes. AWS seems to have thought about every single data storage use case you can think of and created a managed service for it. This is very obvious when you look at their purpose-built database webpage, whether it's relational, key value, in-memory database, white column, graph, time series, or even ledger, you can always find a fully managed database service at AWS. And Azure was actually not very far behind, offering similar services as AWS, um, such as Azure SQL Database, a fully managed relational database service, uh, Azure Cosmos DB, a fully managed NoSQL database service, and Data Lake Storage, a fully managed data lake service, obviously. Now, Azure also uh, offers Azure Database for MySQL, uh, Azure Database for Postgres, which are fully managed relational database services. As for GCP, well, it follows in the steps of the aforementioned providers by offering services like CloudSQL, uh, a fully managed relational database service that supports popular database engines, such as MySQL. By the way, um, I think it's pronounced me, SQL. I read somewhere that the creator of the database has two girls, one is me and the other one is Mariah. So I think it's actually me SQL, not my SQL. Anyways, it supports my slash me SQL, Postgres SQL and SQL Server. There's also Cloud Spanner, a globally distributed relational database service. There's Cloud Bigtable, a fully managed NoSQL database service. And there's Cloud Data Store, a fully managed documents database service. GCP also offers Cloud Firestore, a fully managed cloud native NoSQL document database service. That was a mouthful. <laughs> And for the last item on my comparison list, I wanted to explore a domain I'm not very familiar with, the no-code slash low-code area that's taken the world by a storm recently since the public release of ChatGPT and all the AI tools around it. So when it comes to creating and deploying applications without writing code, 
slash writing the least amount of code possible, AWS offers a wide range of such services, including AWS AppRunner, which allows customers to build, test, and deploy containerized applications quickly and easily. There's AWS Coldstar, which allows customers to quickly develop, build, and deploy applications on AWS. And AWS Honeycode, which is built to simplify manual tasks, no programming required. As for handling data with no code, AWS offers AWS Glue ETL service, which enables customers to extract, transform, and load data for analytics and data warehousing through a series of clicks and scrolls. Azure seems to follow suit as well by offering similar no-code services as AWS, such as Azure Logic Apps, a service that allows customers to create workflows to automate business processes and integrate with other Azure services. And there's also Power Automate, which allows customers to automate business processes and integrate with other services. This one actually was suspiciously, suspiciously, sus suspiciously, similar to AWS Honeycomb. Azure also offers Azure Databricks, which allows customers to build, train, and deploy machine learning models without writing code. And as for GCP, I could only find one cloud service. That was the Cloud Dataflow, which allows customers to build, to test, and deploy data processing pipelines without writing code. So maybe someone who's knowledgeable about uh, GCP can chime in in the comments with more GCP no-code services that I must have missed. Now at this point, I was exhausted. My goal was to try to find an area where there was a clear winner, but the same patterns keep occurring. Regardless of which domain I looked at, AWS turned out to be more complete, Azure more user-friendly, and GCP more easy to start with. But I had to take some time to think about this. And after a while, I realized how each of these providers has its own unique strengths and weaknesses. AWS is known for its reliability and robustness with a long track record of uptime and a huge network of data centers around the world. Azure is particularly strong in the areas of artificial intelligence and machine learning and offers a number of tools and services to support these applications. And GCP is a great choice for those who want a more open and flexible platform with a wide range of open source tools and technologies available. So which one is the best? Well, it really depends. I know you hate this answer, but it really depends on what you need, honestly. If you're a large enterprise with deep pockets and a need for a wide range of services, AWS might be the way to go. If you're a developer or a startup on a tight budget, GCP could be a great fit. And if you're somewhere in the middle, um, Azure then might be the perfect compromise. But you know, don't take my word for it. It's important to do your own research. It's important to figure out the cloud provider that is the right fit for your specific needs. And that's where we come in. We will be doing a series of videos dig digging in. <laughs> And that's where we come in. We will be doing a series of videos digging into each of these providers in more depth. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all things cloud computing. See you in the next video. Peace out.